Good morning. Welcome to our online worship at Martin Luther Chapel in East Lansing. Thank you for joining us today. Our focus is on the Holy Spirit interceding for us in our times of weakness. Come join us for worship. Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess confess that we are in bondage to sin sin and and cannot cannot free ourselves. We We have have sinned sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left left undone. undone. We have have not not loved you with our whole heart, we have, we have not loved our neighbors, neighbors as ourselves. For, for the sake, sake of your Son, Son Jesus Christ, Christ have, have mercy on us. Forgive us, us renew us, us, and lead us, so, so that we may delight, delight in your will and, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, pour out upon us the Spirit to think and do what is right, that we, who cannot even exist without you, may have the strength to live according to your will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. lesson today is from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 18. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. 
for the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope is that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This has been a rather difficult week for coming up with a good example of how this week's reading fits into our lives or is applicable for our lives. The only example that I was able to think of is that old setup that we see in some movies or cartoons where a person is trying to make a decision, something of which the character perceives as a difficult decision. But we would probably not even have to contemplate it for very long. But it is, it is at this point of trying to reach a decision that two assistants will pop up on the character's shoulder to debate the two sides of the decisions. It is the characters of the devil and an angel. Now, this isn't the greatest example, I know that, but it sort of lends to an understanding of how the Holy Spirit works within us. The one side, represented by the devil, is the pole of the flesh. It is the side that gives into temptation or tells someone to send that nasty email regardless of what the outcome may be or to stay out partying instead of staying in and studying for the upcoming test. There are so many different examples that could be brought up to represent this side of things. While the other side represented by the angel shows the right or correct side of possible decisions. It is following the fifth commandment, which is thou should not murder, or as we learn in our small catechism, to not do harm like wishing harm upon that person that cuts you off in traffic, or wishing harm upon the person who chooses a different political affiliation than you. It is following the eighth commandment, which is, thou shalt not give false testimony against your neighbor. Or, as we learn again from the small catechism, it is also understood as putting the best construction on something or a situation. It is not telling fake stories about another person in an effort to deflect your own culpability, failures, or wrongdoings. I would love to think that all of us would make the right decision and listen to the angel, but that seems to be a step too far in some cases. When these situations come up in real life, 
The voices aren't always balanced as we see in the movies or the cartoons. Instead, what we have is sort of like when we first start to speed. Now, I'm sure there are exceptions to this, but for most of us, when we first get our driver's license, we obey every single rule that there is. There's a voice inside of our head that says, follow the rules or else you may get pulled over. You'll suffer the repercussions. We drive exactly at or under the speed limit in fear that the police will find us, pull us over, and repercussions will be life-ending. However, over time, the voice in our head, it, it kind of diminishes a little bit. We hear it, but then it gets softer. We find that the voice of the devil or that desire to allow us speed starts to take over. And more time goes by, and the more we start to ignore that Holy Spirit, that good voice telling us to do the right thing, to follow the rules, that voice gets softer and softer as the voice of the devil picks up. This is the downfall of many Christians, and it does not just apply to speeding. It goes through many, many different levels. And social media shows us the lack of Christian values in some people. They keep producing these thoughts, keep producing deeper and deeper devious thoughts, and eventually actually become our actions. Because these thoughts lead us to sinful actions that we have already justified inside of our head. And therefore, we give in to these depraved thoughts that have built up in our minds. We have a famous example of this in King David. And I have often used this example because it's so clearly the development of our thoughts into our reality. Now, David would go out, and as a good king, he would survey his land. He would look out upon his reality. David would look at all the greatness that God had put under his rule. However, one day, David was looking out and spotted Bathsheba bathing on her rooftop. David developed desires for her and had the opportunity to turn away at many opportunities, especially when he learned that this was the wife of one of his greatest soldiers. But instead, he too did not listen to that voice. Even after learning that she was married, he summoned her to his palace and slept with her. She later informed David that she was with child. So David sought to cover it up by recalling her husband from the front lines of battle to be with his wife. But he was a dutiful soldier and would not sleep with his wife while his men were on the front lines, while they were still waiting on the battlefield to return to their homes too. Since David's cover-up or attempted cover-up failed, he instead sent the soldier back with instructions to put him on the front line and pull back all other troops so that the soldier would be killed in battle and thus cover up his own sins his own defilements and own failures. See, this shows how our minds, without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, will descend into sinfulness. That is also what we see in our reading. The people are grumbling. Well, okay, this is not really unique to our reading. I get that. But today, because today people are grumbling all the time, but it shows the lack of a Holy Spirit. Most of you can look to your left or your right, yes, even at home, or look on TV and see just about anybody and see that these people are grumbling, especially on people's social media, which I have seen many, many grumblings about stuff without any knowledge of what's going on. They just 
take a whim and say, oh, I'm going to complain about whatever. In fact, many times, this is all some people do. They just create things to grumble about. They create scenarios in their minds and make things up to grumble about. So what we are seeing is really a weakness in people. And Paul is writing, however long ago it was, to people that share a commonality with us today. They are also complaining about their situation. So in our grumblings or our complaining, we are in our weakness. There are other times when we are in our weakness, and I'm sure you can come up with your own example, so please do. Think about that in your time of weakness and grumblings. It is in these times that we should pray to God for the Holy Spirit to intercede for us and redirect our actions. This is not only something that I tell you to do, but also something that I do for myself. I am a human and I have my own moments of weakness. When I get insulted by someone, or someone takes a cheap shot at me, I want to lash out. Instead of taking retaliation, I pray that God will give me the strength to do what is right and to be better than those who would attack me. I pray that God will send the Holy Spirit to intercede on my behalf and in my weakness, make me better. In my weakness, that God will direct me on the right path, the higher path, and be better than those who seek to do me harm. To have the strength to carry on as Jesus did when he was being whipped and tortured for our transgressions. To carry on when Jesus was forced to carry the cross, which he would later be nailed to and die upon, to pay the debt which we could never pay. Paul says in verse 26, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. When we pray, you may find that you cannot figure out the words to say, and that is not a, un a unique feeling. Even when people pray for harm, or in an insulting way to someone for, with whom they do not agree, the spirit will intercede. It not only knows what is in our hearts, but it also knows what we really need. So you may pray for the wrong thing. You may pray for harm or insult to another person or not even know what to pray, but our father in heaven knows what is best for you and so does the spirit. So you will not get what you ask for, but what it is that you need. So when your heart isn't in the right place, or when you are not sure what to pray for, you can borrow the prayer of a wise person who prayed, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. These words are Jesus' words, and they come from Luke chapter 22, verse 42. And the second half is something that we can all pray, regardless of our situation. Let us pray, not my will, but yours, Heavenly Father, be done, because his will is that of mercy. His will is what gave us his son to die for us and forgives us all our sins. It is his will that the spirit will help us in our times of weakness, will help us when we do not know what to pray and lead us to everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Thank you again for being with us today at worship. We'd like to say thank you to all of the volunteers who have made this possible. Without your help, we would not be able to record these services, have them online, and spread the message across the states and across the world in some cases. Keep an eye on the chapel chatter. There is uh, a lot of stuff going on right now. You might see some announcements about events or anything relating to the church. And if you have interest in participating in something, please contact the chapel office. I'd like to say thank you too for all the prayers for our families. Most of you know right now that uh, Pastor Kurt and I are going through some stuff. Pastor Kurt's father passed away, my mother-in-law passed away, and all of this within uh, two days last week, Saturday and, and Sunday. So we thank everybody that's reached out and said prayers for us. We hope that you continue uh, keeping us in your prayers as we go through this difficult time. Please remember to give to the church as well, because during this time of COVID, as well as any other day of the week, we operate based on your giving. Without your giving, it would not be possible to continue our operations. You can give by the telephone number or by dropping off in the chapel office or through the mail. There are many ways to give and many ways to serve. If you have any questions, or comments, or concerns, please reach out to us in the chapel office. Thank you. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for your church throughout the world, for all your people. Send your spirit of wisdom and understanding to church leaders and all people of faith, that with compassion they may boldly reach out to those you would have them serve. Guide and direct us here in the ministry we have in East Lansing area that as your people we may serve you and reach out to all those you love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for guidance for our leaders. Give them wisdom to make decisions according to your will. Help bring peace and healing through their work. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, you're the source of all healing and comfort. Please be with those suffering from illness. Bring an end to their pain and give them peace. Guide our health professionals and comfort the loved ones of those people battling sickness. Hear our prayer. For families, for friends, for neighbors, Lord, grant us comfort, hope in your mercy, uh, health, if it be your will, uh, sustain us through this time of isolation and remind us that you are always with us to the end of the age. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with and watch over all households, whether they are made up of families and relatives, roommates, or people living alone. 
Watch over them and grant them patience and understanding with each other and their neighbors as we all deal with the unique hardships we are all experiencing. We ask you to make your comforting presence felt and fill all households with the needed strength to move forward together and adjust to circumstances as they continue to change. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by the Lord and trusting in his word, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give him heaven, folks. <laughs>